really nice. And now it's 4 05, so we we'll start the session. A uh, very good afternoon to everyone present over here. Today, I am Manvi, and I'm a convener at Peak Peak IT Bombay, and I'll be moderating the session today. We have uh, today we'll present the fourth workshop of our Talk Master series, which will be based on content development development for public speaking, and will be taken by Miss Nancy Shah. She is a talk specialist who loves to be on the stage, be it as a public speaker or as a trainer. She also has uh, she her voice is her strength, which also led her to be a voiceover artist. She also does various media endorsements for different brands. And her love for public speaking led her to create an initiative, which is the Speaker Circle, where she actually helps people to improve their public speaking skills. And to uh, add it on the feather of cap, she is also a qualified MBA professional, but she chose her love for speaking and uh, and be in this field. The fourth, uh, the fourth series of our uh, workshop will elaborate on the five techniques of content development. And as creativity takes courage and there is no limit to it, with Miss Nancy Shah's uh, different caliber hold in such different calibers, I'm sure she has a great insight to offer to each one of us, which will actually help you to and to excel in your own content development. And I'm sure after this session, you will learn some great tips and tricks to, to sparkle your own theme of content development. Handing over to our speaker. Well, Hello. Hello. Turn on your audible. And, and I think we are live uh, right now. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. How are you all? Thank you so much for joining on time. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much to We Speak IIT Bombay, this community, this club, to, for inviting me over here, for conducting this wonderful session over here. If you are listening to me right now, type your name in the chat box quickly. Chat box would be our mode of communication. Who all are there? Type your name in the chat box quickly. Okay, we have uh, Priti, hi Kriti, Yogesh, Rucha, Anjali, Anava, okay. Kukan, and then we have Harsh, Isha, hi Isha. Who else? Who else is there? Okay, we have uh, Bhuvan. Hi, Bhuvan. If you are watching us live on YouTube, I am also checking the comments over there. You can type your name there in the comment section and we'll surely try to welcome you in a suitable manner. Hi, Manvi. Of course, you're there. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I'm so happy to see you all. And I'm more than happy for the one thing that you guys are taking this initiative to improve upon your public speaking skills. Most of you would be doing engineering right now or probably planning to do, like there are some students from different colleges as well, other than IIT Bombay, but most of you are from IIT Bombay. At the same time, no matter what you do in the future, like you continue with your engineering field and do a job or you start your own business or you go into some other field or no matter what you do, your speaking skills matter. And to have a grip over it, to differentiate yourself from others and to have a strong command over your communication skills, these guys have planned this workshop series for you. And today is the fourth part of this workshop. And uh, thanks again uh, to the, all the students, especially Aryan, for approaching me over here. And Manvi for introducing me here. Let's begin with the session now. OK, so I want to ask you a very first question. Do you know what is the population of the world currently approximately? You can type in a chat box, guys. Chat would be our mode of communication. What, according to you, would be the current population of the world? Approximately. Okay, somebody saying 8, million, 8 billion, 7.5 billion. Okay, what else? Somebody says, okay. Okay, nearly, nearly 8.5 billion. Well, there are various things uh, that everybody's typing. Let me share 
not exactly, but approximately around 7.7 .7 billion people are alive, are living on this earth right now. What is that one ability that we all 7.7 .7 billion people have? According to you, what is that one ability that we all 7.7 .7 billion people have? Speaking, I wish this could be the truth. Not everybody has the ability to speak. Sorry. Okay, to breathe. <laughs> that is a by default. We are talking about some skill or something, okay? We are not talking about basic necessities that we can eat or we can drink or we can breathe. That's there, of course. <laughs> Communicate, okay, think. Thinking, yes, that's correct. Thinking is an ability that we all have, that's true. Living, of course, we all are alive. We are taking a breath to understand. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, let me tell you, we have many abilities in common. Majorly, the most common abilities that we all have is to think, to feel, and to express those thoughts and those feelings. We all can think anything, whatever we want. We ha all have an ability to think. We all have an ability to feel, we all have feelings. We are humans, not machines, right? I know you deal with machines each day, but we are not machines, we are humans and we have an ability to feel. And whatever thoughts we get or whatever feelings we get, we have our way of expressing those thoughts and feelings. So we have an ability to express. Some people express by using sign language, some people express by just giving you a look like your mother looks at you when you're making a mistake. Get it? Like when your mother gives you just one look and you understand what's wrong and you just fix the problem right away. So uh, some people communicate or express their thoughts and feelings just by uh, using uh, body language. And some people, in fact, majority of us use the speech as a tool of expression. We all express our thoughts, our ideas, our feelings, our emotions, our desires, our disagreements, everything by talking, by speaking, by using the power of words, using the power of speech. And most of us are blessed with an ability of speaking. But the question is, most of the speeches are unbearable. Type yes in the comment section or chat section if you have ever listened to an unbearable speech. I don't want to know when, where, why, how, and who. I just want to know yes or no. Have you ever listened to an unbearable speech? <laughs> I think everybody is saying yes. Okay, let me ask a better question now. Have you ever delivered an unbearable speech? Be honest. Have you ever delivered an unbearable speech? I have done it many times. Hello. See, now people are replying me privately. <laughs> Is it the case? That's not a big deal, okay? We all have grown gradually, okay? Most of our speeches were unbearable initially or are still unbearable up to one extent and we have to accept the truth learning is a lifelong journey and we need to keep improvising ourselves right i also have a scope of improvement and i know my areas of improvement so yes we all know that we have listened to unbearable speeches not only that we have delivered unbearable speeches also the question is why any speech becomes unbearable? Why does that happen at all? According to you, what are your thoughts? Type in the chat. Why do you think that any speech was unbearable? Why was it unbearable? What went wrong? I'm looking forward to your chat uh, and comments. Try sharing your thoughts in the comment section or the chat section. Okay, audience did not connect with it. It was out of context. It was too long, too boring, okay? Uh, by not recognizing the interest of the audience, yes. Okay, then what else? What else can go wrong? 
the way of communication, the content was good, but the presentation or the effectiveness or the delivery power was not that strong. Okay, content was not according to the audience, um, dull, without any expressions, of course. Then also it becomes unbearable. What else? It was a monotonous speech. It was like I was listening to a news channel and not a speech. <laughs> What else? Lack of confidence. There was no confidence. The speaker was not able to speak it clearly and could not present a message strongly. Yes, you all are correct. This all can be the reasons of a not so good speech. Tone and voice modulation and lack of confidence. I think uh, you all have said it correctly. This all are one of the reasons why any speech becomes unbearable. If you want to put it all in one word, or one sentence rather, it would be, it's not just about what you speak, but how you talk it. It's not just about what you speak, but how you speak. It's not just about what you talk, but how you talk it. Uh, I have a request to people who are joining through Zoom, if you please keep yourself muted to avoid any background noise, or I would request the host to uh, do not give permission to everybody to unmute themselves. Whatever questions or anything you have, you can tell me through the chat box. So it's not just about what you speak, but it's also about how you speak. And with this, Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you so much. This was just an overview or a brief. Why are we having this session at all? Why do we need to work upon our public speaking skills or communication skills? I think I've given you enough reason for the same. If you don't want your speeches to be dull, if you want your audience to enjoy it, if you want to present yourself confidently and want to be fluent and make a good first impression and not the first one, but long lasting impression, your public speaking skills matter. And as I say, no matter what you do, which field you work in, where you go, in this country or the another country, no matter whatever you are into, this is a skill which is required. So better, we work upon it. So as they introduced me, I'm Nancy Isha, and we are going to be together for next one hour. Roughly now I have around 45 minutes. But I'll take one hour, huh? extend 15 minutes for me. Okay, so let me start with the one question. What do you think are the most important aspects of public speaking? What are the most important aspects of public speaking or the important areas of public speaking which you need to consider? You can type in a chat and reply. Okay, confidence, of course, it is important. Then quickly, guys, we don't have much time. What are the different aspects or the areas of public speaking that you need to consider or matter or work upon? Confidence, okay, clarity of thoughts, of course, that matters. Or what are the few basic core most important elements of public speaking? Okay, content, of course, our session is about content development, so content is important. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krithi. See, according to me, if you divide any talk, there are three things. And I like uh, those examples which are divided into three things because three is a magical number. So what are the three things that you can focus on or what are the most important three things? The first one, of course, your content, which is the core of your speech. The second one is your body language. And the third aspect that you need to consider is the voice modulation. Now, body language and voice modulation comes into the delivery of the speech, but the content comes the first. Because the answer is very simple. Content is the only thing that can make your audience listen to you. That's the only reason why somebody is there. Why are you here on this Tuesday evening around 4.30 p.m. Why are you listening to this uh, particular webinar or a session? I know you have so many other things to do. You are students, you must be having so many assignments and why was a lot of things lined up. Why are you here? To learn something. And if I do not do justice to your time, or if I do not speak something that is not required or relevant for you, I think most of you will log off in just next 10 minutes. Don't do that, okay? 
what I'm trying to tell you is your content is the king and the content is the only thing why people pay attention to you. Of course, body language, voice modulation matters and they are most of the important aspect of public speaking, but then they come secondary. The first is your content because that serves the audience's purpose. And that's the most important thing which we are going to discuss today. Now, what are the aspects of content development? What are the things that you need to consider when you are writing content? Now, you must say, okay, uh, but I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm not creating content for YouTube. I uh, do not need to deliver speeches on any different topics. I might need to give it on technical topics or I might need to give a presentation or a viva or submit my project or probably pitch a client in future or represent my company or organization, no matter what you do, no matter what your topic is, no matter who your audience is, the things that I'm going to share with you today probably would help you make your speech a better manner. And I think you will be able to justify it by the end of the session. So let's start with the tips that I want to tell you. What is the first and most of the most important thing that you need to focus on? Focus on what your audience needs to know, not what you know. Are you able to understand what I'm trying to tell you? We need to focus on what our audience needs to know and not what we know. So I can talk anything over here, but then I need to focus on what is required for my audience and curate my content accordingly. If I speak something that is not required for my audience, that is not important for my audience, there's no point. So. First and the foremost important thing while developing content is analyze your audience. It's all about your audience. Who is going to listen to you? That's the very first question that you need to ask to yourself. So let me give you a few pointers that might help you. Point number one, know about your audience demographics or uh, geographical background or the education or their occupation. So if I analyze my audience right now, you are in between the age group of let's say 18 to 25 or probably 30 years maximum. Uh, it's okay if you are above 30, that doesn't hamper you from attending this session, okay? But what I'm trying to tell you, you'll be majorly for during this age group. Secondly, you are the student, you're studying somewhere either at IIT Bombay or at some other college. Third thing, you must be doing engineering, probably, yeah, and uh, you are into technical field. And fourth thing, you are attending this session because you want to work upon your public speaking skills. Now, these are the traits of my audience. You need to identify your audience. Who is there? Who is going to listen to you? If I conduct the same session in front of the kids of eight to, let's say, 12 years old, the topic might be seen, but my way of communication, my examples, the use of PPT, probably I'll not use PPT at all. I'll follow some other method to convey the message. It would change completely. The same topic can be communicated in a different manner with different people. So all I want to tell you guys is, you need to identify who your audience is and what they are looking forward to. Another thing that you need to check about their knowledge on the topic. So as this is a workshop number four, I'm really not sure what the other speakers have already told you. As you are already a college student, most of you would have already experienced public speaking many a times, and you might have learned it from different ways also. So whatever I'm speaking, I need to ensure that that becomes relevant for you, something new. Let's say, for example, I'm attending a conference of engineers or let's say some automobile conference or something like that. And uh, I'm presenting over there. And my topic is how technology can ease up your life, like how technology can make your life easy. And let's say my audience is having all the engineers in the crowd. Can I just come and tell that uh, this is a machine and which is the, this is a definition of machine and uh, how this is how technology can work and help us, no? That won't work, they know it already. If I come and speak something which you already know, there's no point, you won't be interested anymore. I need to come and talk about something which is new for you, which is important for you, which you have never heard, which might be helpful to you. So identify different ways through which you can bring up a new thing on table. 
So first you need to know about the knowledge of your audience on the same topic. What do they already know? So how did I get to know what you already know? Through the question answers that we did in the beginning. Through that I got an idea that okay, you have a fair idea about basics of public speaking and there are few things which I want to share with you which I can do now. Okay, so check about the knowledge on the topic. The third thing that you need to check is the occasion or probably the mood of the audience also ensure that you uh, align with that mood. So currently it's a formal meeting, it's a professional gathering, or it's a webinar, uh, you all are here. Uh, you need to also check the technical equipments and uh, ensure that you are able to use it correctly. So those things matter because that will ensure that you are able to present your talk well. So analyze your audience first. Now, man lo ke apne apne audience ko analyze kar liya. You are aware about what your audience needs. And let's say you have a topic in mind on which you need to speak. Tell me one thing. Have you ever experienced that once you started writing your speech or once you started writing your draft, it has happened with you that you forgot something which you last me last or then something has repeated or something has overlapped or something has completely missed or something that you could have written in the last and you last me it in the last and then you had to rewrite it and then you had to rewrite it and modify it again. Has it ever happened with you? Have you ever experienced that your first draft was not that uh, ex as, as expected? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so we have uh, Yogesh. Okay, many people, many people are saying yes. In fact, most of the time this happens that we are not able to write what is there exactly in our mind in a uh, proper format and uh, develop the content. So what is the first step? Generally, whenever we are supposed to write something, let's say you are writing a speech draft or you are writing uh, anything, for example, what we do, we just take a pen and paper and start writing uh, uh, the sentences and paras and paras and then modify it. Or probably you might do it in Word file, but it is still the same case. No, we just start writing whatever comes to our mind. And then at the end of the day, we realize that this could have come first or this could have gone last or this could have been in the middle. That's the mistake that we are doing. So I want to redefine the process of developing content. The first step is not just writing directly. The first step is brainstorming. Brainstorming is a technique through which you can generate maximum ideas on something in minimum time. You can organize your thoughts in a better manner and start with writing effectively. Now, if you can't write it well, you can never speak it well. You first need to have the base and your base is your draft okay so how do you start writing your speech draft let's do an exercise everyone everybody uh, i hope you are alive and you're here and you're watching me give me a thumbs up if you're ready enough for the activity you just need to type things in a chat box so uh, don't worry i'll not ask you to do much so what i'll do uh, we are going to do is i'm going to put a timer of three minutes okay i'm going to put a timer for three minutes and uh, will not speak much uh, and you are also not allowed to unmute yourself. Uh, you can type in a chat box or you can type in a comment box. I'll give you one topic. I'll give you one topic and you need to write down anything that comes into your mind on that particular topic in a chat box. Sounds good? You need to write down anything that comes to your mind on that particular topic in a chat box. Important note that you cannot write long sentences, okay? You need to just write keywords. You need to write keywords and not the long sentences. Point number one. Second, uh, you cannot stop writing. So once you start writing, you have to keep writing constantly. Type one word and enter. Type one word and enter. You need to add as many words as you can in those three minutes. And you have a tight deadline at sharp three minutes will stop. Everybody got it? Give me a thumbs up if you're there and you're ready because you won't get a break in between and you need to continuously write about anything that comes to your mind on that particular topic in the chat box. Nobody will unmute yourself. And one important rule, do not judge your thoughts. So let's say if something totally irrelevant comes in your mind on that topic, don't think that yaar, ye kaun bolna chahega? this is not relevant. Don't remove that thought, type irrelevant things also. No matter whatever comes to your mind, you need to type it there. Do not judge your thoughts. Do not eliminate any option, okay? You need to write everything that comes to your mind. Okay, so now let me tell you what is the topic that you need to brainstorm. The topic is dogs. 
you need to write anything that comes to your mind about dogs for next 3 minutes you your time starts now everybody quickly start writing okay bark pet intelligent faithful loyal bones lovely friendly sharp teeth quickly proficient okay loyal street dogs humble uh, dangerous faithful scary cute loyal okay beautiful faithful scary dangerous humble best friend of human okay uh, doodly <laughs> okay then think ad in addition to basic things okay friend of a human husky animals army toxic rabbits comparison three men in uh, three man in the boat okay feeling unconditional love helper bone curved tails furry hatch scary okay bite play buddy running fast barking escape what else one and half minute done last one and half minute left quickly type anything that comes to your mind in the chat box or in the comment section what else i'm checking out comments on youtube as well mm -hmm. don't stop don't stop you need to keep typing what are the different uses of dogs or what are the things that dogs need or what are the different breeds of dogs or uh, how to have a pet at home or whatever comes to your mind quickly okay last 15 seconds Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. There are more than hundred messages that I've got in the chat box. Good job, guys! You have done a great job. Thank you so much for such a wonderful response. You were so quick in sharing your thoughts. Now, if you look at this, what we have done is. we have actually vomited out everything that was there in our mind of course this is not a final draft or this is not a final list of points that we'll use for our speech but i think it will give you gist of everything which is revolving around this particular topic and i've just given you a simple example of dogs okay you can do it with anyone now when you do brainstorming just take okay this is what we are doing virtually but when you're doing physically for yourself you can take a pen and paper and just make a circle in the page in the center of the book and write everything comes to your mind and it would be something like this probably we have done something around this this is called mind mapping or uh, you may name it brainstorming or whatever now once you are done with this what are the benefits first your mind is empty now aap mein se kitne logo ke sath aisa hua ki pehle bahut basic basic thoughts aaye fir thodi der baad thode advanced thought aaye aur last moment mein to kuch aisa dimag mein aaya jo shayad first moment pe dimag mein tha hi nahi could you evolve in terms of your thoughts like gradually you could find the better ideas you could uh, come up with something new something interesting something which was not there at all when you started writing has it ever happened to you while doing this act activity 
yes most of you are saying okay yeah we have got so many responses most of you are saying yes so this way what are the benefits first you will not miss out on anything whatever comes to your mind just write it down without judging without stopping put a timer of 3 minutes so in the minimum time just in 3 minutes you have everything noted down in your paper and pen or uh, in your virtual chat box so it empties your mind and uh, everything you know you can vomit out everything step number 2 another benefit that it has that through this you will not miss on anything you will not forget anything you will not get things repeated in your speech and three in minimum time you can generate maximum ideas and when you do it in a group like when you are doing it with many people at a time by looking at others response you might get some new thoughts also so do this activity for 3 minutes now once you are done with that of course we can't write a speech draft based on this so of course we have this page something like this and from this we need to convert into something like this so now it's time to organize when you brainstorm you don't organize you write randomly but once you're done with brainstorming you need to organize it how do you organize so let us divide all of our points into five major headings okay or five major titles so most of you have written about qualities and characteristics of dogs second uses of dogs third how to have a pet at home and uh, fourth probably different breeds of dogs so these are the uh, four different aspects which would cover majority of your points so now what you are supposed to do take another paper write down this five headings or four headings or whatever you have given and divide each point into different headings so let's say a uh, bite bark or tail curvy tail or uh, probably uh, using bone ye sare kya hai these are characteristics and qualities loyal friendly a uh, friend of a human you know so that all will come into qualities and characteristics the second probably used in army inspection cid or security or uh, used in entertainment movies and cartoons what are this this all are the uses of dogs so they'll come into that category the third category was how to have a pet at home so for example uh, pedigree or food or good dog clothes or injections or whatever the vaccines and what are the things that the dogs need that will come into their requirements or how to have a pet at home and the fourth one is about breed so uh, uh, pomeranian or general shepherd or probably uh, labrador or pug and what are the qualities and characteristics of different breeds that will come into different breeds of dog are you getting what i'm trying to tell you when you are writing it when you are brainstorming do not organize write it and randomly and then once you are done with it divide them into different categories now few things that you need to consider while doing this first do not carry forward any point which is totally irrelevant so for example while brainstorming i've written hot dog <laughs> now that might come into my mind but of course i'm not going to include that in my speech so you can remove that point from the paper second probably you might get some thoughts which are almost similar so eliminate the other similar option and keep only one option third thing there are few things which are very basic so for example if you are talking about dog you will get a thought that a dog has four legs and two eyes and one tail this is not a standard one class so we do not need such sort of information in our speech whatever you find irrelevant very basic and common or almost similar eliminate all those points so now on your paper you will have the things which are only relevant suitable important and required agar aap sochte waqt hi usko judge karke bologe yaar ye kaun likhega to aage dimag kaam karna band ho jayega so write down everything that you have in mind but then once you are uh, taking it forward in the next step you need to eliminate points which are not required or relevant or not suitable with this you will be able to save time and you will be able to organize your thoughts now once that is done and you have your major points mostly 50% of your work is done because now you have clear cut pointers in your hand now what you need to do you know you just need to identify what are the things that you want to use in which sequence and arrange it properly so let's say if i want to talk about dogs i don't want to talk about characteristics and qualities because they are very basic but yes i can probably talk and compare different breeds of dogs 
or probably I can give you seven tips or five tips on how to have a pet at home. Identify or narrow down your topic. Then you can add different speech ingredients and write your first draft. So before you write your first draft, you're very clear, like how would you be, how, how would you do your first para or second para or third para? What will come into opening? What will come into body? What will come into uh, uh, the conclusion? And then when you write something, you'll not repeat anything. You'll not miss anything. You'll not overlap anything. At the same time, you will make it meaningful. Helpful? Will you be able to do this? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me right now and you understood what I just said. If you have any questions or anything, you can clearly type it out in a chat box. I'll surely try to answer them suitably. And we'll also have a short q &A session post this uh, conversation. But okay, I'm getting a lot of thumbs ups right now. So brainstorming is a technique that will be able, that will help you generate and organize your thoughts in a better manner. Now, once that is done, now it's time to define your opening body and conclusion. I don't want to lengthen this much, but want to quickly tell you, why do you need a good opening? Because your good opening will grab the attention of your audience. See, everybody has so many things going on in life, okay? Well, so for someone, it is a hectic day, or for somebody, their boss has just scolded them, or uh, somebody has got a remark from their uh, professor, and they're not happy with it, or probably somebody has some issues with family or personal life. No matter what, you have no idea what the other person is going through. And everybody has so many thoughts going on in their mind. We are living in a digital space where human attention span has reduced to eight seconds. So if you can't grab their attention in first eight seconds, you might miss all it. So on this task, we need to start our talk or speech with something that grabs people's attention and they, that hooks them. So quickly type in a chat box, what are the different ways through which we can open a speech? How you can develop a good content by organizing and opening your speech in a good manner? What are the different ways which you can use in opening your speech? So asking questions, very good point. Let me share a few things with you. So when you are asking questions, uh, that's a good way of doing it. In fact, I want to give you a few tips on that as well. Interacting with the audience, okay, a subtle joke, of course, you can use humor in your talks. What else? What else? What are the different aspects through which you can open your talk? Well, there are many, starting with a famous quote or uh, connected with uh, the content, of course, quote or example, a dialogue from a movie or uh, famous uh, lines by of any song or a poem, or you can add a story, or you can start with your personal experiences, anything. Do anything that you want to do, but you need to ensure that you open your talk well. Well, I want I don't have enough time to explain each and every point, but probably you can check out uh, our YouTube channel. So I run an initiative called Speaker Circle, where we have created more than 27, 28. Like today we released the 28th video, which is on tips on public speaking. Uh, you can just speak a search, speak a circle or Nancy Shah, and you'll be able to find those videos. And there you'll get more tips. We have given the real examples with the videos on how you can differently open your talks. Okay, short stories, connection with the movie, arouse curiosity, ask questions. There are many ways. What are the things that you need to consider in the body of your talk? So the body contains the main points. Point number one, two, three, four, their examples, the arguments or the uh, things that you want to suggest. At the same time, the transition from first point to the second one, from second to the third one, from third to the fourth one. You need to ensure that you are able to use and connect all the parts of the speech together through effective transitions. What are some good transition statements? Well, there are many. So moving ahead, I want to share another thing. Or in addition to all this, this is what I want to say. Or for example, let me share a personal experience. Or I want to share three things with you. Firstly, secondly, thirdly. Give suitable pointers, transition. Organize your body part in clear cut pointers. What are the things that you can include in body part? The supporting evidences, like data, statistics, or examples, or quotes, or personal stories, or some other stories, or motivational stories, or moral stories, something that is relevant and required for your content, or which is related to your content. 
those things you can include over here. If you want to show something, you can use audio visuals as well, uh, show an image or a video or anything that you find suitable. So these are the different ways through which you can use the body part of your content. And then the conclusion. Now conclusion is the cherry on the top. Conclusion matters because through conclusion, you will be able to create a long lasting impression. So for example, uh, if you want to say something, repeat to those things in your conclusion. So you need to ensure that you are able to uh, pass on a message again and focus on the main takeaways of the speech or the talk. So it is like a cherry on the top and you need to ensure that you conclude well. You can, okay, what are the different ways of concluding a talk or a speech? Providing suggestions and recommendation or providing a feedback or giving an overview of the talk or highlight the main major takeaways or the points that you just discussed. Or you can promise something like all the leaders do, you know, if you do this, we'll give you this, something like that. Or you can uh, uh, ask for an appeal or make an appeal. So I want all of you to go and donate blood after listening to this speech. This is your appeal to the audience. Or you can just create a better hope for the future that uh, after listening my speech if we all uh, consider and become more friendlier while using the uh, environmental uh, objects that are around us i think we'll be able to save our earth so you know i'm creating hope for the better future so there are many ways you can conclude a talk as well right now i want to talk about few things and for that i want to ask you one question what are the different things that you need to cook a maggi i am sure aap sabne maggi khaya hoga and aapne kafi bar banaya bhi hoga what are the things that you need to cook maggi quickly you can type in the chat box what are the things that we need to cook one maggi okay stir maggi water okay okay everybody is typing salt you need salt of course then what else heat what else okay so there are many ingredients that we need somebody would put veggies and masala and somebody would uh, have a dry maggi or sukhi maggi or somebody will have a gravy wala maggi everybody has a different choice but there are certainly few ingredients required in the same way each speech requires certain ingredients. There are certain ingredients that you need to make the speech beautiful. What are some speech ingredients that I want to suggest to add in your speech? Ingredient number one, use proper nouns instead of common nouns. You need to ensure that you are using proper nouns. Now, what are proper nouns? Let's say, for example, if I say I met a celebrity. Now, celebrity, is it a common noun or a proper noun? Well, it is a common one. It's a common noun. Celebrity can be anyone. Like Chunky Pandey be celebrity ho sakta hai, okay? <laughs> but if I tell you that I met Amitabh Bachchan, oh God, he's indeed a celebrity. Hmm? So you need to use more proper nouns than common ones. When I say celebrity, nothing happens in a mind. But when I say Amitabh Bachchan, I am sure you must be able to see his face up against your eyes, even if he's not here right now. So when you use proper nouns, people will be able to relate with your talk easily. So whenever you are developing content for your speech or talk, use proper nouns instead of common nouns. So that is ingredient number one. Ingredient number two, be specific about date and time. What are the things that you need to consider when you are writing the important aspect of date and time? So let's say, for example, if I tell you, we woke up early in the morning. Now for someone, morning five o'clock is early. For someone, morning seven o'clock is early. For someone, 10 a.m. is also early. And for someone, probably 12 noon is also early, especially if you are an engineering student. So what I want to tell you is, early does not have any definition, okay? Rather than saying that we woke up early, if you say that we woke up at 5 a.m., oh God, that's really early. 
people would be able to relate with it. Be specific about date and time. So we won a trip last year. Instead of saying last year, you can say, okay, on 18th August, something, something, we went on a trip. It was a memorable trip of my life. Give a reference to date and time. That is ingredient number two. I hope you're getting it. I'm going quickly ahead because we don't have much time. Ingredient number three. State figures and numbers and facts with the reference. No matter where you are, what you're talking, what the topic is, you have to give the references of the data that you represent. And who else know this better than an engineering student? <laughs> give a reference to data and statistics. If you are concluding something, there has to be, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> There has to be the base for the same. There has to be some reference to it. So ensure that you're giving the reference to the data. So if I say that there are this number of cases of the COVID in the world right now, or this many people lost their job because of COVID uh, during the last one and a half year, if I'm saying anything which considers or involves data, I need to give a reference. I cannot just say according to one research, no. According to a report submitted by WHO, or according to a report submitted by UNICEF or UNESCO, uh, this is the data, you know, so you need to give the reference to it. That increases your credibility as a speaker. When you do not give references to the data and statistics you use, that reduces your credibility as a speaker. Ingredient number four, use comparisons. You can use comparisons very well in your, it's like using analogy. Okay, so let's say there were the, okay, when I climbed up the stairs to my college on the third floor, I, it felt like I was climbing a mountain. I'm using a comparison right now. Hmm? The one hour long session felt like it was a one day session. It was really boring. I hope that's not the case right now. I, I just wish for the same. Or probably if you say, the one hour went like anything. I didn't realize that this hour has passed. I hope that's true right now. I wish for the same. You can give me a thumbs up if you're feeling it. So all I want to tell you is you can use comparisons. Use comparisons to say things in a better manner. Okay. The ingredient number five, that is idioms and phrases. There are so many idioms. This is Muhavre Bolte na Hindi mein. There are so many idioms and phrases in English language, or be it any language, you'll find uh, suitable content there. Use them. So instead of uh, saying it was very easy for me, I'll say it was a piece of cake. I could do it very easily, you know. I don't know, but there's something wrong. Instead of saying that, you can say it was, uh, I was smelling a red. There was something wrong, you know. Using those idioms and phrases makes your speech more meaningful. But yes, one note over here, you need to ensure that your audience understands it. If you use idioms and phrases and your audience is not able to understand what you're saying, there's no point. So make it relevant. Don't use those phrases which which are not that common. Okay, you're not there to bombard upon your language skills or your knowledge over idioms and phrases. You're there to make it relevant and important for your audience. So first point, you need to make it simple and then add things that you want. The ingredient number six, question and answer. As somebody has said that you can use question and answer in the opening. I think you can use it anywhere in the opening body conclusion, wherever you want. You can use q &As. Like I have asked you so many questions. If you just look at the chat box, you'll be able to identify how many things you have responded to. So use question and answer. Now, when you're using question and answer, there are three types of questions. First is open-ended. Let's say if I ask you, uh, did you like the movie? Or how was the movie? No, or the answer can be one line, one sentence, one word. When I say, how was the movie? You can say, yeah, movie was good, one sentence. Or you can say, oh, yeah, movie was good, but it was a little slow, you know, and the acting done by this person was really not so good. So it can be three sentences, or it can be one paragraph, or it can be two pages also. So open-ended question has no limit. Now, when do you use open-ended question? When you want to involve your audience. But when you have a critical time crunch, like I need to complete this session in next almost 15, 20 minutes maximum. So then 
I will not ask open-ended question because if I ask open-ended question, I'll be not able to keep track on time if the audience takes more time. So use open-ended questions only when you find that there is enough time with you. Or use closed-ended question. How was the movie? Yes or no? Did you like the movie? Yes or no? Hmm? Or for example, uh, have you ever tried this or have you ever watched this movie? Yes or no? So yes, no, agree, disagree, like, dislike, where there are clear, true, false, where there are clear cut options. Hmm? And your audience just need to raise a hand or type yes or no. That would be very quick and easy. And I think we have used it most of the times during this session that I'm conducting right now. So try to use closed ended question. Third type of question, which are rhetorical question. Now, rhetorical questions are like, I'm not actually expecting an answer, but I'm still asking a question to make you think upon something. So when I say, you know, what do you think of yourself? When I ask you this question, I'm not asking you right now, okay? This is just an example. So when I say, what do you think of yourself? You're not going to answer me this question, but you're going to think upon it. Are you getting my point? Hmm? So they have to, don't you think we need to take care of for our health first and then about our career? Probably you might not be able to answer quickly. I'm not expecting an answer, but I'll make you think upon something. Don't you think we need to take care of Mother Earth or Mother Nature in a better manner? We are moving ahead in technological advancement, but we are hurting it. So when I ask such questions, they are rhetorical questions where I'm not expecting an answer from you, but still I'm asking a question because I want you to think upon something. Did you get clarity of this? There are three types of questions. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me right now. There are three types of questions, open-ended, close-ended, and rhetorical. You can use any of them depending on your requirement and what you want your audience to feel and how you want them to respond to you. So six ingredients are done. Ingredient number seven, word pictures. Now this is my personal favorite. So word pictures, um, have you ever read any novel or a storybook or love story probably or uh, any fiction or any drama or uh, have you ever read any book of uh, any mystery or, or sort of a, a, a thrilling book or something like that? Yes, no, maybe. If you have ever read any sort of be it short story or a novel or a thick book, whatever, has it ever happened with you ki wo book padte padte na, aap us dunia mein kho gaya, aapko pata bhi nahi chala ki what is the time, where are you sitting right now, what others are doing, you had no idea. You were completely lost and you felt as if those things which were mentioned in the book were happening around you. Aisa kabhi feel hua hai, aisi cheeze padte vakt? So uh, probably when you read Sidney Sheldon or Jeffrey Archer, when you read their novels, you might have experienced something like this. Yeah, movie may be hota hai. Movie to, of course, it has an audio visual and they take you through the other journey. All I want to tell you is something that author is trying to explain you in a manner that you are able to connect with it so much and go into that time or that place or in that mood or anything. And they are able to do it through description. So that, that story or that novel or that fiction, that particular topic is described so well, it is written so well in a manner that when you're reading it, you're able to visualize it. That is called word pictures. Word pictures means when you speak something, when you write something, when you say anything, say <clears throat> sorry, say it in a manner that your audience can be with you, can imagine, can visualize, create a picture out of it. So let's say you're sharing your personal example, when you're sharing the story or when you're explaining things, explain it in a manner so that people can relate with you very easily. And if you are able to do this, your audience will be with you. Got it, everyone? So ingredient number seven is use word pictures. Ingredient number eight, 
dialogues and direct speeches ingredient number 8 is dialogues and direct speeches you can use the dialogues from different movies or you can use uh, quotes given by different people or you can use direct conversations or you can also use uh, the uh, headlines of some magazine or newspaper or whatever okay so those things can be added in your talk ingredient number 9 and the most important one real life incidences so before i share anything else if i share my personal experience my personal story my personal example i think you all would be able to relate with me very easily so when i come to and tell you that guys see i have also delivered unbearable speeches okay i started from there itself i have delivered so many unbearable speeches and i'm still learning i'm still improving okay because learning is a lifelong journey so when i tell you this you all can relate with me okay fine there's somebody who is almost similar to us are you getting my point so what i'm trying to tell you is tell your personal examples your personal stories your personal experiences because your audience would be able to connect with you there very easily and storytelling itself is an art and when you tell something in a manner of story i think you'll be able to grab attention so use real life incidences or stories and examples to convey your message ingredient number 10 i think quotations and poems or stories and poems uh, i think there's so many beautifully written poems out there quotes out there or stories out there you can use anything like any moral story motivational story any real life example of some other person so let's say if i am talking about goal setting or uh, success i can give you example of virat kohli or probably priyanka chopra or anybody you know uh, who is a famous successful uh, person alive living legend right now starting from amitabh bachchan to anybody sachin tendulkar or anyone so those examples can be added ingredient number 11 is humor you can add humor into your talk now humor is really an epic or the most amazing way of connecting with your audience people might forget what you say people might forget what you told but people will never forget what they felt so uh, make them feel good and you can do it through creating humor so make them laugh crack some jokes in between or probably create humor of yourself now whenever you're using humor first thing to note that you need to you need to learn to manage it also okay जोक क्रैक करना और जोक को मैनेज करना दोनों अलग बात है काफी बार ऐसा होता है कि आपने कुछ बोला और आपका कहने का पर्पज और था और लोगों ने कोई अलग तरीके से लिया एंड इट कम्प्लीटली वेंट रॉन्ग सो यू नीड टू कंट्रोल इट इफ यू आर नॉट कंफर्टेबल विद इट डोंट ट्राई ह्यूमर बिकॉज इट माइट फील कम्प्लीटली अगेन यू डोंट नो विच आइडिया और विच सॉर्ट ऑफ ह्यूमर वुड वर्क फॉर योर ऑडियंस सम थिंग्स माइट वर्क फॉर सम पीपल सम थिंग्स माइट नॉट वर्क फॉर सम पीपल सो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अ लिटल ट्राई इट आउट फर्स्ट प्रैक्टिस विथ योर फ्रेंड्स एंड देन ट्राई ह्यूमर इन योर इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉक्स एंड स्पीचेज अदरवाइज इज कैन एक्चुअली स्पॉइल योर प्रेजेंटेशन ऑल्सो सो दिस आर अच्छा वन मोर थिंग ऑन ह्यूमर नेवर मेक फन ऑफ अदर्स बिकॉज थ्रू दैट यू माइट हर्ट दैम so never make fun of others you might laugh at yourself like i do many times and most of the stand up comics do but then again if you keep doing it continuously people might not take you seriously the best way to create humor is to laugh about uh, things or situations which are non living so for example i can laugh on the traffic jam or i can um, create humor out of how my mobile didn't respond properly or my how why uh, what happened when my whatsapp uh, got hanged so if i'm creating humor through this i'm just giving you examples okay probably these are not the topics that you need to speak on but create humor through the ways which won't hurt anyone at the same time people won't uh, uh, consider you likely okay so these are few tips on creating humor as well so these are the 11 speech ingredients that i've shared with you let's revise this 11 speech ingredients quickly one well, first one use proper nouns instead of common nouns second you be specific about date and time state figures and numbers with references use comparisons or analogies use idioms and phrases questions and answers word pictures dialogues and direct speeches real life incidences stories poems examples of other people and using humor did you all get that 
Give me a thumbs up if you're still with me and this makes sense to you and you've got some few helpful tips from this uh, talk that I've just uh, done for last almost an hour. Okay, now I want to share a few master techniques with you, which you can add in your speeches. So first is the magic of three. What is the magic of three? So it is said that if you want to say something, say it in number three. So you might have listened it from people, you know. Leaders are the uh, leaders are the one who knows the way, who shows the way, who goes the way. Say so they've done it in three. You this is also called as triads. They, they are also known as triads. So if you want to say something, say it in three words. We want people to be comfortable, confident, and fluent. I'm using three words rather than four or five or rather than uh, let's say two, use three. It does not mean that uh, two or four is bad, but three is a magical number. If you want to say, uh, if you remember, so Steve Jobs has given this uh, beautiful speech at Stanford University uh, in, a, in a convocation of uh, one particular year. And there he used the power of three saying that, today I want to share, tell you three stories of my life. Nothing more, just three. Okay, so this is just an example. You can check it out. That speech is amazing and that is available on YouTube. You'll be able to find it. So three is a magical number. So use and say something in three words or three sentences and it will be more impactful. Got it, everyone? So that is the magic of three. Try to apply that whenever you are writing or developing content for your speeches. Another technique that I want to suggest to you is use alliteration. Now, what is alliteration? So let's say, for example, four P's of marketing, product, price, place, promotion. Or let's say seven C's of communication. Everything starts from C. Or, uh, for example, if I tell you that uh, three tips on uh, public speaking, uh, practice, uh, perfect your speech or perfect your body language, I'm using certain words. So when you are using the major words, highlighting from the same letter, that is a alliteration. So four P's of marketing is an alliteration. And you can create your own alliterations as well. So use alliterations. It becomes easier for your audience to understand. Another technique that you can use is use rhyming words. So for example, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Now that is a rhyme, we all know that, right? So Jill and Hill is a rhyme. In a similar way, you can use the rhyming words in your speeches as well. So for example, when I tell you that leader is the one who knows the way, who shows the way, who goes the way. Now that all are the rhyming words, the, the way, the way repetition is done over there. So try to use rhyming words. Or for example, if I tell you that, uh, uh, India does not need more rackets, but the rockets. Now, rackets, rockets, somewhere they are rhyming words. Or for example, if I tell you uh, the uh, six ETs of marketing or six Ts of something. So now those are mostly rhyming words. So use rhyming words in your speeches. Another tip that I want to add here is uh, use repetition. So, uh, Great people discuss ideas, average people discuss uh, things, and uh, dull people discuss, uh, uh, you know, people. So here I'm using repetition. Cooking delicious, it's okay. Eating delicious food is a happy task, but cooking delicious food is a difficult one. So cooking, eating, they are rhyming words. Delicious task, uh, difficult task, they are somewhere repetition. So you can use repetition intentionally to give a uh, impact to the words that you're using. So these are the few tips and techniques that I want. Okay, one more thing, you can use metaphors also. So for example, if I tell you love is jewel or life is a journey. Now life is totally a different thing. Journey is totally a different thing. I'm combining and connecting them both and adding a meaning to the life and the journey both. So this is a metaphor. You can use simile also. So there are many techniques and tips. You can figure out more about the figure of speeches, the figures of speech, and you'll be able to learn more tips and techniques. But try to apply all these things. If you have a sentence, you have a sentence, you have a sentence, somebody has put an effort in writing it properly. 
So develop your content in a proper manner. Gradually, you'll be able to deliver it in a suitable manner because the content is the first thing that people will focus on. So let's say if I review what content I have spoken about today. So we started with the uh, introduction on public speaking and why do you need it? Then we talked about content, uh, how you can brainstorm. We talked about brainstorming. Then we talked about uh, the opening body and conclusion, how you can organize your talk. Then we talked about 11 speech ingredients. And then I have given you a few techniques, right? Uh, three is a magical number or using alliteration or acronyms or reputation or rhyming words. This all the thing, these all are the things that we just discussed. This is just, I'm trying to conclude what I just said. I know it's already 5.10. I have already finished the time that I had got, but I'm happy that you all are still here and listening to me. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, we can take it up. All I want to tell you is uh, public speaking, learning any skill is a lifelong journey and you need to continue with this journey. Do not stop. You need to keep going and practicing it again and again. Your first draft will never be your final draft. You need to write it, develop it again, rewrite, edit, review, re-edit, and then you'll reach it to your final draft. Once you're done with that, use cue cards. Most of the people have this question, like I'm good at writing, but how do I present that? The answer is use cue cards when you want to present your talk. If you don't know how to use cue cards, you can again check the video that is there on our YouTube channel because I have a limitation of time. I won't be able to cover everything, but I think those videos will be really helpful to you. So search Speaker Circle YouTube channel. You'll find the 28 tips on public speaking. By now we have released and we are going to plan and create more tips also. Uh, other than that, if you want to, you know, work upon your skills or improve your public speaking skills, you can also be part of our visitors WhatsApp group and get in touch with us and we'll be able to help you with that. You'll get uh, the link of the WhatsApp group or the, you just need to fill up a Google form. Uh, you will get the link of that form in the YouTube channel or any of our social media handles. Uh, I'm easily approachable on LinkedIn. If you think that I can be of any help anytime, you can feel free to reach out. So thank you so much, everybody. It was great talking to you. Over to you, the coordinating team. Uh, if we have any questions, we can take it up. Yeah. If anyone has a question, they can raise their hand and then we could take And then they could unmute themselves and ask. I hope this makes sense to you all. I just tried and shared whatever I felt in a limited time that I had. I'm open for your feedbacks and suggestions as well. Ma'am, I have one question. Uh, thank you for the uh, nice session. Uh, so, like, yeah, you said about writing your draft for your speeches, right? Like, I would like to know how long do you typically take to write your draft for a speech and how, like, how, uh, how many times do you revise and edit your draft okay. for the speech? Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Lokesh, for asking this question. So, if you brainstorm first, you will reduce the number of revisals. Okay? Aapko wo jo revision karna padega, rewrite karna padega na, wo kaafi reduce ho jayega if you just brainstorm first and then start writing your draft. Again, how many times you need to do it or update it, that is completely up to you. So first brainstorm, write your first draft. Your first draft is generally a vomit out draft. Now you review it, you add examples, stories, quotations, those 11 speech ingredients and make your second draft. I, generally, I personally suggest you to review and edit your draft at least three times. Write your first draft, update and make it your second draft and then the third draft. You might be able to get your final draft in the third attempt. And if you are taking longer than third attempt, then also it's okay. It's a process, okay? For a few times, probably you do it for five times. Uh, you write your draft for the five times and update it five times and then gradually reduces to four, to three, to... I think two se to koi nahi aaya hai. I have not seen anybody ke jo first draft mein hi aflatoon speech like there. That is only the final one. I think everybody needs to write. Agar aapko lagta hai ki ye jo sare TEDx speakers hai ya fir in fact koi bhi person hai jo bohot achche speeches dete hai. Do you think ki wo aise hi aake bolne lage hai us din? Their speeches are very well written, written, rewritten, edited, re-edited, scripted, 
memorized at least 400 times and then presented on direct stage okay so everybody goes through the same process so if you need to write it for five times or seven times don't worry and i think uh, we have the technology now word file has made the task easier it's easy to update things uh, also you need to check the grammatical check uh, use grammarly.com if you are not using that's a free website through which you will be able to uh, correct your mistakes i hope i've answered your question lokesh uh, yes ma'am thank you okay can we have the next question so i think we have many uh, probably manvi you can select does anyone else also wants to ask a question so um yeah hogan hogan god if i'm speaking it ma'am uh, like uh, sometimes uh, we have the opportunity to give a speech of 5 minutes and uh, maybe our content may exceed that so how to eliminate the points and how to know which points would be better to eliminate i can relate with you completely and it doesn't matter whether it is 5 minutes or 1 hour even today i had to make a difficult choice in what i want to include in today's session and what i don't want to include because of time so i have so many things to share and uh, generally what happens we fall in love with our content okay once we write something we don't want to miss on it and then uh, the chances are many times we miss on the timelines and we are not able to do justice to the time so nobody likes a speaker who exceeds the time okay so let's say i have got an hour now we started a session around 4 uh, 10 or so or let's say 4 5 i need to at least wind up it from my side by 5 10 it's okay if i go to 5 15 but if i talk more than that that won't be suitable so how to ensure what to include and what not to include when there are many things okay write down the major points so today i had a topic uh, content development in public speaking what are the things which are most important one ki iske bina to nahi hi chalega itna to bolna hi padega you include those things and the things that can be talked in other ways or in a different manner or probably are not the basic or core the most important one be prepared for the same keep notes for the same have your content in place if you get opportunity to share it let's say sometimes aisa hota hai ki humne plan kiya tha usse kam time mein humne khatam kar diya then you can include those points or sometimes aisa hota hai ki somebody ask you a question and you can respond to it by using that content so keep all your points ready but then in your main slides or in your cue cards keep the things which are really important and which you actually want to convey keep a scope of a buffer of 5 minutes you might take longer than what you expect if it's a long session or if it's just 5 minute session you have to practice it really well and especially when you are participating into competitions or uh, some uh, uh, quizzes or anything like that where you have strict timeline like if you exceed 5 minutes you will be disqualified now in those sort of situations you have to actually put a timer and practice with the time so that you complete your talk on time so don't fall in love with your content ab thoda abhi isme koi rule nahi hai ha ki pehle panch cheez jo dimag mein aayi wo le lo aur baki ki panch rehne do ho sakta hai ki last mein jo cheez dimag mein aayi wo sabse zyada important hai so you need to judge so write down all the major points and sub points identify how long each point would take and then include them in your main speech or eliminate them you need to take the decision nobody else can define it for you is that clear bhushan I yes, ma'am. Like uh, I have another follow-up question. Like you have told many ingredients which we can use. So, uh, like, uh, uh, like five to six, using that ingredients would be comfortable. Like we can't add every ingredient in. Of course, of course, of course. So, so I have just just said this ingredient. So let's say, for example, using date and time, facts and numbers. Now you will give references of statistics and data only if you are having data in your talk. right so use it when it is required if you are using data add the reference if you are talking about an incident add a date and time if you are talking about the person use the proper nouns are you getting the point but let's say for example word pictures stories uh, or probably question answers or humor these are common things that you can use anywhere again you need to see the platform where you are speaking so for example if you are giving a formal presentation or completely a formal talk you might not use your personal example there or you might not use humor over there 
but you might use question answer over there or you might use uh, statistics or data over there where you are creating a pitching presentation for your company you might use data and statistics and you might not use a quotation from a movie or a newspaper so you need to apply your own logic on which ingredient will be required when i am just sharing this ingredients you need to use it depending on the need is it clear yes ma'am another question Uh, like okay uh, if i am giving a, a content for another speaker and uh, i wanted to add something like actions in that so how could i present in that content sorry i didn't get your question what do you mean to like say like i want to huh? like i am not giving the speech okay i want to uh, draft a content and give it to another person who want to speak so in that hmm. uh, uh i want to add elements where some actions you know, where humor actions like maybe picking up prose keeping something there like where actions also include some body language of uh, course you can do that of course so uh, let's say when you are playing a role of a content developer or content creator or content writer where you are not the speaker but you are writing and developing content for somebody else and you want to give it to them and they are going to perform it all you need to do so okay when you are writing for somebody else or for yourself first understand who is going to listen and who is going to speak okay i am nancy sha my way of speaking is different than probably uh, we have a uh, manvi here right so manvi have i spelled your name correctly ha huh. so manvi uh, manvi's way of speaking is different manvi's audience is different and the way she is going to talk or for whom is she or the purpose of her speech might be totally different so first i need to understand where she is going to speak who will be the audience and what she wants to convey once i know that i need to assume that i am manvi and i need to write the content accordingly and i can add actions or question answer or humor or even quotes and everything that i want to do all i need to do is when i am using action points i can also into brackets write ask this to audience when you speak it so when manvi reads it she gets to know okay this is the activity uh, while speaking this show the book in the brackets you can put the notes for the speaker let's say i have developed content for manvi now i'm not in touch with so generally you have a scope to talk to the person okay so you can either write it or while doing rehearsals or while conveying or passing on a content i can just speak to manvi once and tell her that okay manvi and the, at this points you need to show this prop at this points you need to change the slide at this point you need to ask questions you know i need to coordinate and ensure that she understands why i have written it in this manner and what i expect her to do in her performance to add value to it and most of the people do it what do you think all the speakers are they are developing the content on their own especially all the celebrities no when they go and give a talk they are content developers they are content writers somebody else is writing somebody else is narrating somebody else is speaking and the audience is totally different so you need to communicate the purpose and you need to ensure that the speaker who is going to speak is able to understand why you have added all these things and how to apply it practically in the speech i am still open if you have any further question uh no it was very great session thank you thank you bhushan that uh, bhushan ya bhuvan bhuvan sorry i'm i'm very bad at names i'm really sorry bhuvan but thank you so much bhuvan for uh, being here and asking so many questions i have one more question from one person who is asking it was an amazing session i just wondered uh, to know if you are gujarati yes i am gujarati <laughs> probably uh, that uh, mother tongue influence is still there Okay any more questions you can ask or probably we can wind up the session i am really thankful to you guys for being here it's almost 5:30 and still you guys are here thanks again to aryan and manvi for organizing this particular talk i hope you enjoyed or if somebody wants to give a feedback uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, give a feedback too we'll be happy to hear from you anybody wants to say anything okay you got it from the name yeah uh, i think everybody has done their share of uh, asking you the questions we'll conclude it
so man first of all thank you for the amazing and the wonderful interactive session you just had i'm really sure that everyone who had a knack of developing their own content by speaking will get some fruitful actually will get a large amount of fruitful tips while you were speaking and we are very glad that you came and that you spoke for the workshop which we just held so thank you for coming and everybody thank you for joining us for the session we hope you all enjoyed it and will join us for the next one as well for sure thank you so much i am so happy to be here and coming at iit bombay is always an honor so looking forward for further more sessions with you uh, thank you so much for a wonderful feedback and yes let's keep connected okay thank you everyone thank you everybody So have we ended the YouTube live? Yeah, we are just ending it. We are just okay. okay. Thanks everyone. One second, we are just ending it. I think there is some. It's okay. It's okay. So people who are watching still on YouTube, thank you so much again for being here. I hope you enjoyed the session.